Hello, our group topic is NSG Plus Technical Proliferation by Engaging the Private Sector by Fuizi Go and Yong Kili. We will first begin by introducing the background of NSG. Following the explosion of a nuclear device of a non-nuclear weapon states in 1974, the world has witnessed the exploitation of nuclear technologies that were transferred for peaceful purposes. To further prevent having nuclear-related materials and technologies from being used fraudulently, the NSG guidelines were published by IAEA in 1978. Our research question is, given that major exporters of nuclear-related technologies are private firms and enterprises, how can NSG member states synchronize efforts between the public-private sector to reinforce NSG guidelines and rules through effective enforcement mechanisms and the implementation of supply-side controls? Now, I will share a list of common smuggling methods employed by exporters which can be classified into four types of related schemes. The first type is ordering related schemes. This involves obtaining goods from a state with weak or non-existent export controls, and also seeking subpar goods just below in quality or technical specifications of those on dual use or direct use of control lists. The second type is shipping related schemes. This includes using trading companies abroad, even multiple trading companies located in different countries, to acquire and then transship, obscuring the actual end user. The third type is financing related schemes such as abusing the international financial system by the use of aliases, fraudulent paperwork, methods of obscuring the country of origin, and by transacting via multiple banks. The last type is proliferant state as supplier schemes, such as operating manufacturing sites in a foreign country that supply the proliferant state with key components. The offshore manufacturer may not know who or what it is really supplying. Next, I'll go over a literature review and case studies. The first case is about MKS instruments from the US to Iran. On May 18, 2012, a worker from MKS Instruments was indicted in an illegal scheme to ship high-quality pressure transducers from MKS to Iran's nuclear program. Pressure transducers can be used in gas centrifuges to enrich uranium and produce weapons-grade uranium and are thus subject to strict export controls. The second case is about ONA electroerosion from Spain to Iran. In April 2010, the Spanish company exported seven electrical discharge machine tools and three separate shipments to Mapna Turbine Blade Manufacturing Engineering in Iran. The third case is about labeled AG from Germany to Iraq. In the 1970s and 80s, labeled was a key supplier for Iraq's nuclear program and for the AQCon network. After the Gulf War, inspectors in Iraq discovered labeled equipment was being used in centrifuge manufacture. The last case study is about the AQCon nuclear proliferation network. In January 12, 2009, the U.S. Department of State imposed sanctions on 13 individuals and three private companies for their involvement in the AQCOD nuclear proliferation network. Next, I'll talk about reinforcing the non-proliferation culture. First, strengthening non-proliferation culture in the private sector. Private companies must transform their culture by changing employees' incentives, such as rewarding employees for proactive non-proliferation performance, which may include bonuses for identifying and blocking suspicious transfers or for identifying ways to improve the firm's non-proliferation approaches. Secondly, developing a proactive approach in the private sector. Encompassing partnerships between companies and governments to share information on private entities seeking nuclear-related technologies, suspect inquiries, best practices in reviewing export requests, and achieve compliance with export rules. Lastly, bolster cooperation between the private sector and government. To further strengthen the non-proliferation culture, Governments should grant civil immunity to private entities, providing valuable information to the government related to detecting and preventing illicit trade. Such laws will help to bolster relations between the government and the private sector to prevent illicit trade. Now I will move on to our policy recommendations. First, we doubled government efforts to pressure private firms to comply with NSG guidelines and regulations, including UNSCR 1540, which is a vital prerequisite for supply-side control, and educate them properly about the rules. Secondly, better detecting illicit trade, bolstered government industry partnership to thwart illicit trade through increased cooperation with the intelligence community. Third, fostering a corporate culture of compliance. Companies tend to avoid legal risks that may damage their corporate reputations when they are charged against exporting nuclear technology and are blacklisted by the government. Fourth, strengthened voluntary cooperation with the private sector. Governments should share information regarding the more recent illicit procurement schemes with reliable companies and be aware of emerging dual-use technologies in the private sector and take preemptive measures. Fifth, 
enhancing the coordination of the laws and practices of NSG governments. NSG member states should fulfill the regime's responsibilities at the domestic level through effective enforcement mechanisms and reinforce its own rules and regulations and internalize the regime's ideas and their government's norms and rules. And here comes the conclusion of our paper. In order to further enhance the effectiveness of NSG and be more successful in tackling proliferation, it is crucial to engage with the private sector, which is also the main exporters of nuclear resources, to further increase the success rate of non-proliferation at a greater rate. Being the major exporters of nuclear resources, the private sector has the biggest connection with the world's end users and also the greater number of control of the transfer of nuclear resources. That being said, Increase in engagement will definitely lead to an increase in the effectiveness in tackling proliferation. Both top-down and bottom-up approaches will have a better coverage of the nuclear trading world and hence escalate the surveillance. And that's it from both of us. Thank you.